So the White House is on a defensive uh, after botched communications about what was said during a phone call between President Biden and Ukraine President Zelensky. A CNN reporter in a now deleted tweet said President Biden used the word sacked uh, and warned that Ukraine should prepare for impact. Meanwhile, a headline in Political brings up the possibility of this conflict involving nuclear exchange between the United States and Russia. And then this morning, Secretary Blinken, he weighed in, and the White House also reached out to many Wall Street firms. Joining me now, the managing partner of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And David, just your thoughts on where this might be heading and what it would mean for financial markets. I really don't think it is a major financial market story in the short term and in the specifics of what's going on. Longer term, I think the stability of NATO, I think uh, matters of international order have significant uh, impacts to risk premium. But I don't think this particular story gets escalated to the point of being a market event, other than how it adds to the potential narrative of a weakening Biden presidency, and that impacts his domestic agenda. Now, we did see uh, the, the, the news, though, kind of help oil inch up a little bit higher. Uh, and, and you couple that with uh, folks like Goldman now saying that this rally should last at least to the end of the year and go much higher. I mean, you've been the guy. You were in there in this oil trade before anybody else that I know. Your thoughts on, on if it's getting stretched or not? Yeah, with the actual commodity price, it's always very difficult to know because supply demand characteristics can change so much. And you have a lot of non-economic actors that are in oil. And that's something you and I know. But I don't know if, if we do a good enough job letting listeners and viewers understand. Oil doesn't just trade the way that uh, stock price does with company earnings. You look at a, a Chevron today. It has expectations built in. It has dividends, has cash flows. Oil prices have people hedging, it has speculators, right. and it has real people taking delivery. So it's a much more complicated animal. Goldman actually doesn't have a great track record at forecasting oil prices. I'm just simply following the economics of supply demand that we have had a massive glut of demand build up and inadequate supply to build it and inadequate political will to meet that demand. What about then, let's pick up on the, the Chevron, uh, because they had a big earnings miss this morning. People who own oil stocks, and a lot of folks have rushed to this trade here recently. Uh, it, it, it does point to the fact you still have to execute. Even when you have a favorable backdrop, uh, how, do, how do you, what do you say to folks who are now just now buying oil stocks? I mean, there's different types. There's the upstream, there's midstream, you know, there's downstream. It's a pretty complex uh, uh, environment, isn't it? It is. And I wouldn't be as bullish on the downstream area. Uh, we're extremely bullish on the midstream component. But in fairness, Charles, uh, Chevron executed extremely well. They, the stock is up massively, well over 100 percent in the last year. It's just that the expectations have gotten built up and then you have the news come out. Things come down a bit. It's record levels of revenues, cash flows growth. But, uh, you know, you get this kind of sell off sometimes when the stock is up so much. And right. so they're well past pre COVID levels. I mean, just think about how extraordinary that is. I remember the day I was on your show and we were talking about oil being below zero, supposedly. <laughs> and here we are with Chevron at one hundred and thirty three and people think it's down. You remember that? Uh, that was a nutty. That was a nutty day and week. Uh, hey, before I let you go, because I love these conversations, I got to get your thoughts on Powell. You were somewhat skeptical about how aggressive he would or could be. It feels like now the street thinks he's going to, you know, really live up to this new Hawkins label. Will he or, he, yeah, or he, can he? Dub, I mean, you know, will he will he do it? This is one of the most predictable things. I feel like I'm cheating coming on the show talking about it because I'm not predicting anything bold. They're going to talk hawkish and they're going to be hawkish until markets or something forces them not to be. And then they will immediately backtrack. And so people saying, oh, look, it seems like he's very hawkish now from the rhetoric. We saw that through Bernanke, Yellen, the early stages of Powell. We've always seen them talk hawkish yeah. until they run into credit spreads widening, until they run into a 20 percent market correction. They made risk assets addicted to low rates. There's no precedent in human history of a central banker all of a sudden becoming truly hawkish. Yeah, and we should point out uh, they, they have pushed off uh, not buying assets to the bitter end, right? They could have stopped a long time ago if they really were oh, hawkish. Yeah. <laughs> David, talk to you again real soon. Have a great weekend.